Hello and welcome to a brand spanking new Crafty Simulations video. Now, if you go on my channel, you may notice a live video that just popped up. Um, we was going to be flying this video live, however, uh, the weather's not particularly good at the moment out in the real world. And, well, I'm thinking the internet strength is not the best for live videos, especially a video that's going to take uh, this long. So, a little bit of a backstory. Um, I fly... The Cows DA42 in the Leading Edge Aviation Repaint. Uh, it's featured in quite a few videos now, and basically, uh, I've been saying over the last few videos, I'm going to be flying this aircraft, this particular aircraft, back to its real world home airbase, which is London Oxford. So that's what this video is going to be. Now, I was, like I say, going to make this a live video, um, but obviously, the internet has decided to go, eh, eh, not going to happen. So it's going to be a pre rendered video or pre recorded video, whichever one you class it as. So, um, yeah, I cannot wait to get this one going. So I've been sat here for quite a while trying to set this all up. Um, I have little nav map running. In fact, I will show you what I've got in mind. Make this quite big so you can actually see it. Uh, right, so... We are currently sat in our usual parking location here at RF Waddington, and we'll be departing runway 20. Um, we we're making a south route to our first of our waypoints, which is going to be RF Barkston Heath. Um, carrying on going south over Cottesmore, or RAF Cottesmore, um, and we will carry on down to RAF Sywell, kink over towards, uh, what's that, Tango India X-Ray Echo X-Ray. Uh, that's just a, a waypoint, and we will then go over to, what have we gone to, uh, Tango Hotel Romeo 07. And that'll put us on route for our destination of London Oxford International Airport. Uh, we'll be landing at runway 19. So, yeah, that's the route we've been put into um, into little nav map. Um, I use little nav map now quite a lot, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, and this particular route, it's not based off any kind of real route or any kind of real knowledge of planning for routes. Um, it just keeps us out of the way of Birmingham's busy airspace uh, and in between, well, that'll be, I don't know whose airport that's going to be, uh, Duxford's? No, it's not going to be Duxford's airspace. But we're getting down into the busy airspace, obviously, of London uh, and northern, I won't say northern London, but um, that area of the middle of the country where things get a little bit congested. So, yeah, that's going to be today's flight. Uh, I'll just turn that off. Um... Like I say, I was going to make this a live video. It's obviously not going to work that way. Um, bless them. Bless the internet. Bless the weather. Um, so, yeah, I am going to try and make this video. It's going to be a long video, um, I'll be perfectly honest. Um, I'm hoping that we can have a little chat along the way. Um, I'm not going to use um, the checklist. I was going to add the checklist into this video if I was going to make it a live video. It make it even longer, but it makes it a little more realistic. Um, I don't think we need too much there. Um, I'm hoping that the G1000 um, navigation system can use the waypoints I've got set up here for um, little nav map. We should be able to pick them up, but you never can tell. Sometimes software doesn't always work properly. So anyway, let's get this aircraft started. So we're not going to have um, track IO on. Let's check if it is working. Yes, it is working. Good. I'm not going to have that on just yet. Uh, as you can see, sat in our usual location. Uh, on a nice sunny morning. I don't know what time I've actually set this up for. That's the wrong button. What time did we set this for? Oh, 9.04 in the morning. Hmm, okay. Weather looks good. It's going to be a good VFR flight. Uh, April the 18th. It's even today's date. So, yeah. Let's get this aircraft started. So, we'll put the main battery on. Let that warm up, clear that. So this will not be a by the book start up. In fact, it'll be quite a quick start up if I'm honest. So positional lights are on. Let's zoom this in a little bit so I can actually see what's going on. Everything looks to be correct. Fuses are all in. Uses are checked. Uh, 
Right, so the usual warnings, door open, yes, pito heat, install heat are off, correct, and the alternators have failed because obviously we have no juice coming to the aircraft. So that's settled. So we're going to start the left engine first. So check the area is clear, which obviously it is. It's a flight simulator. It's not like a load of people are going to be here. Wait for the warnings to go out on the globe plug. They have. And we're clear on the left. Let's a little bit. And hopefully we can still hear me. So we'll just check the audio. And yes, I would say... Everything should be right on the audio level. So now we shall have power coming on. Pito heat is on. That will shut the aircraft up actually now. Makes things a little bit less noisy. So, right engine. Again, waiting for the warning to go out. The warning has gone out. Clear on the right side. Caution light is correct because that will be the... Thank you very much. That'll be the stall warning. That is correct. So we're gonna let the aircraft. We'll let the aircraft warm up. So let's set our route. Origin is going to be Echo Golf X-ray. Wilco Waddington is going to be departure runway to zero. This is one of those things where it's not real to flight simulator because we have apparently a runway zero two R. We don't have a zero two R. I keep saying it's in the flight simulator, but I don't know if there's a flight sim that does that or whether it's the scenery, the guy who actually created this, or person that created this scenery, I should say. But anyway, we are departing runway two zero. That is set. So, the first of our waypoints is going to be Echo Golf. Echo Golf. I've forgotten what Y is. What, what Yankee? I think Yankee? Yeah. Sounds familiar. Uh, that's Barks and Heath. That's correct. Then we will be heading down to Sywell, was it? I do believe it is. It is correct. It's Echo Golf Bravo Kilo. So Echo Golf Bravo Kilo. Oh well. And then we was going over to... Uh, this one's a good one. It's, I don't know whether this is going to go in. I'm hoping it goes in. It should pick it up. So, T, yeah, Tango even. Tango. I've forgotten what it's called. Tango. X-ray. The Echo X ray. Let's check on the flight plan. Echo X ray. Let's see if it comes up. That's in the UK. Well, that is correct. So now we need. Tango. It's the joys of flight sim. T 
Tango Hotel. Romeo 07. So we need. Hmm. Now, which one is it? That's the question. That'll be the one. I actually got it right. Ha. And then we're going into destination, which is Echo Golf Tango Kilo. Echo Golf. Tango Kilo. Runway will be one nine. Entered. So that should be. Whoops, the wrong way. That will be our route down south. So we're using exactly the same waypoints that little nav map is using, which is a good. <laughs> Switch over to now one or screen one, even I should say. Altitude today will set it for let's set for 5,000 and see where we are regarding let's set that to GPS transponder. We're going to set to on. We're squawking 7,000, that's correct on VFR. So we'll change that when we get to the Runway, engine, lean, it's correct, systems, we're gearbox, we're fine, temperatures, we're fine. Woo, I think, that that, obviously. Don't want that. Um, we are pretty much set to go. Finally. Like I say, this is going to be a long video. Always check your brakes. That's the last thing that's going to slow you down. So I'm hoping that, um, you're actually interested in a long video because that's exactly what this one's going to be normally i hope to get around 30 to 40 minutes i know a little nav map will actually tell me how long this um flight's going to be but uh i actually don't know so this one's going to be longer like i said i was hoping to make this a live video Would have been a little bit easier, but uh, at the moment we're having bad weather in the UK. It's amazing, a couple of days ago I was standing out in the sunshine, but uh, now it's, uh, no, it's not sunshine. I've got my usual run up position. Point ourselves out the way. Back and wait, Saxon. Right, so we are correct. Fuel pump's coming on. 
lighting we'll deal with in a minute everything is correct autopilot is set navigation is set all that out a little bit right okay so we'll do our run up We'll do that a second time. And run up is complete. So, trim, we will set a little bit of right rudder. Control one, transponder, off report is squawking altitude. Correct, VFR is set on the... That is set. That's set to engine. Routing is correct. Boat lights coming on, landing lights coming on. Don't need flaps for takeoff. on approach not that there would be any traffic Parking brake set. Lights are set. Fuses are set. Fuses are popped even. Nav is set. PDF is or PD. Uh, this screen here. Set. Fuel is set. Trim is set. And we're good to go home. Come on, parking brake sitting on the wheel brakes. Eighty dots rotate. Tap on the brakes. Get selected up. Another smooth takeoff in the twin star. We'll make our left orbit whilst gaining altitude. One thing I miss of this aircraft um, that does, I do, do believe does not exist in the real Twin Star um, is the fact of a sunshade or sun visor. Sometimes in flight simulator it can be just a little bit too bright when looking in the sun, but then again, I suppose if it was real, you would be flying with sunglasses, so, you know, I'd look a bit silly with sunglasses on in reality. So 
So just past 2,100. Just gently increasing the speed past 124. Just trying to hold that speed. It's a good speed to climb. And we'll start heading towards our magenta line for our course down south. Autopilot coming on. Vertical speed. We'll just fly a heading mode at the moment whilst we head back towards our magenta line. Usually I like to fly uh, heading mode to take me towards my desired course. So passing 4,300, climbing for five. Heading mode coming off, nav mode coming on, GPS has been selected and aircraft has captured the magenta line as we just pass 4,000, nearly 4,700. So, landing lights can come off, strobe lights and positional lights are still on, that is correct. Warning for the altitude, we're past 200 feet to our desired altitude. So altitude is starting to flash now. Aircraft levels out. And I'm just going to set this to the usual climb, uh, usual speed now. And there we are, at 5,000 feet, heading south. I'll pull this out. We are currently, believe it or not, we are actually heading south, um, even though the screen is orientated so the aircraft always heads up, up the screen. I've got to change that around because obviously it's not realistic. So we are heading south. Heading to our first waypoint. So I'm going to cut the video here because, like I said, this video is going to be very, very long, longer than my normal videos. Uh, and I will come back to you when, uh, well, we're about halfway on our journey. We'll have a little chat about future projects and future videos and content. So um, I shall see you for what will be a few seconds for you and quite a few minutes for me. Hello and welcome back to the flight of the DA-42 Twinstar uh, by Leading Edge Aviation from RF Waddington and we're going back home to this airport where this aircraft is actually based which is London Oxford. Currently sitting at 5,000 feet and we are about halfway, it's coming up halfway to, to the flight. In fact I'll actually show you where we are. A uh, little nerve, if I remember how to... Oh, I need OBS, don't I? <laughs> uh, OBS, turn on that. Right, so there we are. Currently we are sat in... We've just got over Cottesmore and we are heading down south towards Sywell. 
we'll be turning a little bit as we head over towards um, our approach into London Oxford. Now you might be noticing what these rings are here for. These rings are just basically here for my purposes. They are 5, 10 and 20 miles, I think I set them apart. Uh, so it gives me a clue when I can start my descent, basically. Um, so yeah, currently we are, well, no issues whatsoever. Um, certainly a nice flight, certainly a nice day for it. Um, yeah, having fun. So anyway, like I said, why are we taking this aircraft down south? Well, obviously, I have, I believe it's Orbex's, um, I'm hoping I've got Orbex's software lo uh, scenery loaded up. I hope I am. I have, I'm sure I put it in my scene. It's been so long now since I've been saying I was going to do this video. Um, so yeah, I, I, I know I bought the um, scenery. I'm hoping now that I'll put it into the simulator. Um, because it actually does have uh, a building. It's obviously very accurately created, uh, created like most of Orbex's uh, software is. And there is the buildings that are covered with leading edge aviations uh, advertising and it's their home offices and all head offices and all that sort of stuff. So that's the reason why we're taking this aircraft down south. Now we are going to be flying from uh, London Oxford and uh, we're going to be flying around a local area. I have said I am hoping to take this aircraft through uh, the Mac loop and You may be wondering what the heck is a Mac loop? Uh, the Mac loop is in Wales and I am not going to even try to attempt to actually complete the name uh, But it is just called the Mac loop if you go onto YouTube or Google and just Google Mac loop You'll come up with all sorts of stuff for it um, It is a place where military air forces like to do some very crazy flying through um, valleys basically and even though it is known for military aircraft, the airspace is actually free to uh, for anyone to fly through. So any civilian aircraft can also fly through there. Obviously, you know, most civilian aircraft are not capable of flying low level and doing tight turns or anything like that. Um, I'm not going to be trying to make Top Gun with a Twin Star because that would be silly. But I am looking at definitely taking the Twin Star through, uh, through the Mac Loop. Now also, um, in the real world, I do aviation photography and a part of my kit, I have uh, various tracking software for aircraft and usually set up for military aircraft. But what I can do is put the registration number of any aircraft um, that I know into it and it comes up with the history of that aircraft. So what aircraft, what that aircraft was doing over the last few weeks, months, whatever, I can't remember how long it goes back, but basically I can come up with the flights that the real Golf Lima Delta Golf Foxtrot um, was doing as part of the training program that Leading Edge Aviation does. So I'm thinking I'm going to try and replicate some of the flights. Um, off the top of my head, I do know that the aircraft was flying out of London, Oxford and heading towards the over Essex, over East Coast, that area, and starting to do various approaches uh, and missed approach go rounds um, into airports. I can't remember exactly which airports they were using, but basically, you know, it's crew training uh, in a multi-engine aircraft so I'm hoping to cover that as well now you may be thinking is this channel just going to be on the DA-42 well no it's not this channel is oh, excuse me is the home of a general aviation here in Microsoft flight simulator now as other GA aircraft are released. Um, I do have quite a varied collection of general aviation aircraft. Uh, I will put videos of them flying from various airfields. Um, I want to do some more review videos of various um, general aviation uh, aircraft. There is a particular aircraft, and I've forgotten the name of it once again, that just fly to actually very close to releasing. It's going to be coming out this year, um, which I'm very interested in. It's, if you think about their Turbo Arrows and their Ario, Arrows even, and the Warrior, um, the Pipers, it's along those lines. It's not a Cessna. I don't believe it. No, it's not a Cessna. Um, but it is a very basic aircraft 
uh, that is used for general aviation and VFR flying and, you know, basic crew training. So I'm very interested in that aircraft. Will we ever see military aircraft on this channel? Now, that's the question I want to ask you guys. Do you want to see me? I know I've just said this channel is the home of VFR and obviously general aviation flights, but do you want me to branch out and to cover some other uh, types of aircraft, so military aircraft? And I don't mean going nuts on, um, on like, you know, the Typhoon or the F-35 or things like that, but just other aircraft we have here in the sim, because there is a varied collection of aircraft out there. Um, I do have them on my simulator, but obviously this uh, channel is purely for uh, aircraft like this Twin Star. So, uh, yeah, do you want to see me fly? Um, what, what aircraft did I download? I brought the Airplane Heaven P-47, for instance. Um, I haven't flown it yet, but um, I have got that in the collection now, so do you want to see me doing a video in the P-47 jug? <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, yeah, let me know. Uh, other than that, we are going to be doing night flying, uh, some circuit work at night. I just want to check that we are going to t make a turning. So, yeah, I am going to do some night flying. I want to do some bad weather flying as well. Um, but yeah, just let me know. Do you want to see me branch out in my flight some later videos? Uh, I obviously won't take over the fact of the general aviation stuff, but yeah, it's interesting to see what other aircraft are available in the sim. So, yeah, I will cut this part of the video now. We will come back when we are starting our approach into London Oxford Airport. So, once again, for you, a few seconds. For me, a little bit longer. Well, welcome back for part three of the flight from RAF Waddington down to London Oxford International Airport in Cow's DA-42 Twinstar, uh, the leading edge aviation Twinstar. We have currently just passed the outer range marker on um, little nav map. So what we are going to do now is we're going to open this screen up and we are going to press procedures and activate the vector to final. And if we, yes, the aircraft should now start turning over to enter the vector, so it's going to take us off our flight course. We did pass the second to last waypoint, but now we should have a vector straight into runway 19. I want to say 19. Hang on a minute, I'll be back in a minute. Hey, I actually got it right, 19. So, yep, we shall be starting our descent, so we will be throttling back now. Setting our altitude the wrong way. For 3000, vertical speed, no negative. We want to go down about 600. As we start our descent, obviously we have now got a new magenta line, I'll just show that. Because we selected um, a procedure, and we have actually selected the procedure for a visual approach into runway 19, and this is the actual now new magenta line taking us directly straight in to uh, London Oxford. So. It's a very unique way, well it's not a unique way, it's a very interesting way, it's a very easy way if you are struggling to bring in uh, your aircraft into your desired airport. I haven't actually flown into this airport. I've s I know I loaded this airport and um, checked that it had gone in. I'm hoping the simulator still kept it in. No, it might look. It probably hasn't. So I apologize now if we are about to land into the standard London Oxford scenery, but um, I did purchase Orbex's London Oxford Airport, so I'm hoping that it is in. So we're descending down to 3,000 feet.
Might have got a little chat while we were waiting. Um, I know Flight Simulator or Microsoft Flight Simulator released their latest, and I quote unquote, legendary aircraft. Um, <laughs> what do we all think about it? I know that the uh, Dune, 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 which I want to pronounce it, um, franchise connection link with the flight simulator got a lot of flack. Uh, how do you think about the latest legendary aircraft? Oh, the Dornier, H well, I can't remember what the aircraft is called now. I know it was, it wasn't what I expected, let's put it that way. A DO-31, I was going to say 41. Um, yeah, um, I don't know whether I'm going to get it, I really don't. I mean, I've got some of the legendary aircraft, they have featured in previous videos. But, to me, it's not a legendary aircraft. Is it a unique aircraft? Yes. Is it a very well-created aircraft? No doubt. Any builds had, you know, their hands in creating this aircraft. But... Is it really that important of an aircraft? I don't know, it's it's very weird for me. I don't know whether I'd actually get it. Um, yeah, it's it's a very interesting aircraft, no doubt about it. Uh, if you don't know what the Dornier uh, DO-31 is, or was, it was a... I believe it was supposed to be an airliner, stroke cargo-carrying aircraft, um, but had the ability to hover, um, neglecti negating even the need for an airfield. Um, so basically... This aircraft could literally take off, like the Harrier, for instance, and the F-35 Lightning. Um, it's definitely interesting, I'll, I'll give it that, but whether it classes itself as the true legendary aircraft, hmm, I don't know. So, I believe I can see the runway, so I need to concentrate now. Your port's coming on, landing lights coming on, don't need taxi light, uh, engine setting correct, fuse is correct, flaps are correct. So far, it's still carrying on our descent. I need to get back onto my rudder pedals. So, autopilot is now disengaged. Flaps up to one stage. 120 knots and descending. Gear coming down. Gear selected, gear travelling. Three green. This is where one tries to concentrate now. I keep having to pinch myself sometimes just how beautiful Microsoft Flight Simulator looks. There are people that are joining the sim that have never had the, shall we say, the interesting times of flying an FSX or FS2004 or FS2000, FS98, I want to say, or FS95. Um, I still remember flying, what was it, Flight Simulator 3.1, I think it was called. It was on the old floppy drives. 
Flight Simulator has certainly come a long way. Coming down full flap. I think we've just hit our final waypoint. So we're now on finals. Can't remember the length of the runway here at London Oxford, but uh, it's going to be long enough. So, last of the checks, just as the 500 feet warning comes up, lights are good, engines are good, T's and P's are good. One red light. Two red lights. And we... Hey, I actually saw the right software. That's a first. Totally wasn't worried that I was going to be landing at Microsoft's standard scenery. <laughs> Looks like the only turn-off point is at the end of the runway, so we don't have to worry about that. So, welcome to London Oxford, as a little nav map calls it, International Airport, where the local time is, oh god, what is a local time, this thing? Well, actually, in the real world, it's 20 past midnight, but um, in the real time, I have no idea. Where is the clock of this thing? No idea, it's probably a digital clock. Perhaps select it up. I do believe this is the first time Orbex have actually featured on one of my videos. So this will be a quick little scoop through the airport. Now we're expecting some pretty good things here. So, landing lights coming off, taxi lights coming on, strobe lights coming off. Our transponder is now set to on standby. Fuel pumps coming off. I'm going to find out where we're going to park this aircraft now. Uh, can't quite see the building yet that's actually marked up. I can't remember where it is. <laughs> like I said, I've never been to this airport before, other than install it into the sim. Oh, I can see another twin star. 
Oh, I can see another twin star there as well in front of me. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I can see the building. We're not going to park right next to it. I don't know how far you can actually get to it with the aircraft. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn here. We'll park it in front of one of the hangars. Is that a Dasso Falcon? Not 100%. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to park it in there, so there isn't a turning line, so we'll just swing this one around. If you wonder what that bonging noise is, because I'm riding the rudder at the moment. If I straighten the rudder out, it usually, yeah, there you go, it goes. But we need to use the rudder, because that is connected to the steering. Parking brake set. Do, 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 do. Step lights are out. Taxi lights coming off. Positional lights are still staying on. Pito Eat is off. Now, usually on the checklist, we'd keep the engines running to obviously uh, cool them down a bit from a flight, but we haven't made a checklist flight, so we don't have to really worry about that. And this video has probably gone on quite long enough. Right engine turned off, left engine turned off. Avionics coming off, don't know why the screen went black. And positional lights are off. Da -da 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 -da. Everything else is correct. Battery's off. So, welcome to the home of Leading Edge Aviations. Golf Lima, Delta, Golf, Foxtrot. Uh, I do believe, I can't remember exactly where the building is. I think it's that one. And I think there's a marking on the side of it that says Leaving Edge Aviation. I'm not 100%. We will feature this more in a more detailed video in the future. But uh, yes, finally, this aircraft is back home where she belongs. And like I said, we will be doing a lot more videos from uh, London, Oxford. Uh, we'll be branching out to other countries, like Wales, and, uh, and a few other countries. I have said I want to find a Europe. Um, but yes, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, I hope you found this video fun. And if you have any questions or comments, please bang them below. And hopefully we can get around to flying this uh, aircraft in its native airspace, of which it normally flies in, in reality. So on that note, I will see you in a future Crafty Simulations video very, very soon.